there are six questions that everybody must answer this night if you want to build a system and a structure in your life and in your organization it is important to answer these questions let's deal with them very quickly number one the first question that everybody must be able to answer if you desire to build a formidable system and a structure around your life is number one why do i exist the question of vision the question of the goal that is to be achieved the knowledge of the end product you cannot build effective systems around your life if you cannot answer the question of vision why do i exist as a person as far as god's divine plan is concerned why do we exist as an organization there must be a clear definition of your vision there must be a clear definition of the goal to be achieved there must be a clear definition of the end product is someone learning please look up it is difficult to systematize anything if you do not know why it exists when jesus showed up he gave us his manifesto in clear terms in fact his name his very name captured his manifesto jesus jehoshua the one who saves that salvation to seek and to save the lost was his primary goal he also added to us that he came as a correction of our idea about god that everything we thought god is or god was jesus came as a marking script so that we will look at his life and begin to edit our understanding about god that was told us by the prophets and by the law how many of us here can tell me with precision why your organization exists what vision it is pursuing now what goal it seeks to achieve what is the end product man of god i know you are praying and fasting but can you tell me what you are trusting god to become do you know that many people do not have an idea of what the end product is so there are several activities that are leading nowhere are you learning now there are many people today respectfully speaking who do not excel in ministry because the ministry has no known vision the ministry does not have any goal the ministry does not have even an end product as a man of god when you teach and mentor people in a church like this you must have an idea of the back end of your mentorship what should they become beloved people please look at me how many of you will go to a school or send your children to a school whose end you do not know imagine a lecturer coming into a class and seeing several people and saying well i am professor this or doctor this i am here to teach you and the students have no idea no reference as to what they should become can i tell you knowing the end product gives you the power to endure you cannot indefinitely stay, receive the staying power to become nothing who for the joy that was set before him is it in your bible he endured the cross and he despised the shame there must be a clear definition of your vision a vision for your life a goal to be achieved so god has called you into ministry hallelujah what has he given you what is what is the end product what do you see yourself becoming you must answer that question there are many businesses today that just happened because of hunger there was no vision so the, the business cannot even last more than one year because the motivation was not anything long term the man was hungry and he was just told that look if you at least do something exchange value you will get something to eat it is a risk to start moving without knowing where you are going imagine with me ladies and gentlemen that you stop and an, a bolt or uber or any of the transport systems you have around and then 
you tell the man take me to so 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 place do you know it the man says yes and then he begins to fire running like he's been pursued by police and then he's taking you somewhere you don't know where you are going so you were banking on his knowledge and later on he would confess to you that sincerely i forgot to tell you this is my first day at work i just came into abuja last week would you clap for such a person and say wow you are you are such an in let's keep going now hold on is there a problem with motion is there a problem with activity is there a problem with speed and yet there is no arrival in the presence of motion in the presence of activity even in the presence of speed without vision you will not arrive is someone hearing what i'm saying now yes that is the reason why you give meetings names so that those who come for the meetings have an idea of what to expect if you say you are coming for a citywide crusade all those who come they know what to expect if you call it a crusade don't blame me for bringing someone on a wheelchair don't blame me for carrying a dead child and coming with the person you call it a crusade there are things that should happen in a crusade ground imagine with me that we call a meeting a crusade and as soon as people come for instance and respectfully speaking i'm teaching you five keys to prosperity that is not wrong but that is wrong for the name given to that meeting a crusade targets the salvation of sinners and then at best the strengthening of believers within a territory hallelujah you must answer the question of vision there are many of you you want to be men of god if i ask you why say there's something boiling in my heart i just know that i'm supposed to be doing this that is good but not enough motivation not enough to stand in the midst of all the things that befall you as you serve god who for the joy that was set before you endured the cross despised the shame number two is god helping us the second question you must ask tonight if you want to build systems and structures in your life is who are the beneficiaries of my solutions very powerful question you want to build a system around your life that helps you produce impact who are the beneficiaries of my solutions don't say i am sent to everybody potentially yes but who are the beneficiaries of my solution jesus himself when he came he said he was here to seek and save the lost that means if the father had found you he didn't have a ministry for you to seek and to save the lost there are many of us here you do not know those who have been mandated to be the beneficiaries of your solutions as a man of god you do not even know those you are sent to as a businessman you do not even understand your clientele you have to know those you were sent to when moses had an encounter with god god did not say moses take this rod roam around anywhere you see human beings just tell them you have met the god of the bible watch this the nature of his training was with respect to where he would be sent to is someone is someone learning now yes moses i am sending you to egypt here is your mandate deliver them from the hand of pharaoh take them out of egypt into a land flowing with milk and honey precision and to meet pharaoh i would have to train you very powerful who are the beneficiaries of your solutions can i tell you every mandate and any call whether in ministry whether in business there there are targeted beneficiaries that you must understand it can be an age range it can be a vision it can be a gender you have to know your clientele i know those god has sent me to 
every time i see people who need encounters and revival in their life every time i see people who have gone down spiritually you are calling for my attention every time i see someone who has not been saved you have not encountered jesus you are calling for my attention every time i see someone who is spiritually down there is no fervency no fire no appetite for spiritual things you are calling for my attention everywhere i see demons oppressing people you are calling for my attention don't invite me just show me someone oppressed that is my invitation based on the mandate show me someone who is sick that needs a demonstration of the power of God show me a territory that needs revival and fire you are calling me question what calls you there are many people who do not know what calls them what calls you for some of you you have been raised as kingdom financiers that everywhere you see poverty and lack and the house of god suffering something should call you but you are not able to create any system to be excellent why god cannot even use you to be a kingdom financier because you do not know the beneficiaries of your solution don't downplay what you are hearing we have a lot of politicians here when they make you a house member you are not a house member of nigeria you are not a house member or a senator they they they, they define a region is that true and your your assignment principally is to that region who are the beneficiaries of my solutions so that you can invest your time not knowing this will help you will make you build wrong systems you are going to be ministering to people you are not gifted for people you are not graced towards are we together now very very important i sing i'm not ignorant as far as music is concerned i was once a music director but my call is not to be a worship minister to go to the nations so i will sing but i will sing while i am preaching there is nobody who has invited me to come and sing a special number yet if you invite me i must almost always sing why because that gift can find expression as a subset of the bigger picture are we together now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you sincerely from this night may god lead you to find those who are the beneficiaries of your anointing the beneficiaries of your call that that gift that he put within your spirit you must find those you are sent to please sit down man of god listen there are many people today who are genuinely called of god but they have not been able to identify those that god put the solution in them for there is respectfully speaking there there is a ministry called the full gospel businessmen's fellowship how many of you know that ministry now do you know that that is a powerful ministry that has changed lives the ministry came targeted to business people and people of influence because the the founders discovered that it was difficult to minister to people of influence so the whole idea is to evangelize people and keep them on fire for God and then to use their influence for kingdom come that is what defines that ministry you will not see full gospel businessmen having a deliverance service or going around um, having a crusade from city to city but you will see them hold a meeting with only 30 people and based on the definition of their ministry they are highly successful the blind pursuit for general results that creates competition creates frustration is because we have not defined there are businesses that do not have more than 100 clients yet they are billion naira and billion dollar businesses because the nature of the business it does not serve everybody is that true Who are the beneficiaries of my solutions question three is someone learning tonight question three are you ready what tools do i need this is powerful 
now i'm i'm answering questions that will help me build systems and structures around my life question three what tools do i need your tools talk about your skills your tools talk about your resources your tools talk about your relationships what skills will i need don't just create systems out of nothing what tools do i need please look up in this ministry for instance because of the nature of what god has called us to do we know that to be effective there are tools that we need and there are resources that we need are we together now that is what birthed the structuring of every department we know that there will be need for a media capture and so there are media people who are walking all around as i'm speaking we know that the nature of the ministry and the size of the ministry will necessitate a, a very intelligent security system at the highest level possible and so there is every kind of security system imaginable put in place you cannot create systems until you know the tools that you need what do you need to succeed there are some of you can i tell you what you need to succeed in your assignment is billions and billions and billions that will now help you to know what to put in place the kind of structures that will drive you what tools do i need please look up if you are moses remember you need a rod never move until you find a rod if you are david don't stand before goliath until you have your sling and make sure there are five stones not an empty sling is someone speak is god speaking to someone here yes what tools do i need look up please if you are a man of god and you know that you need a high level anointing a high level manifestation of the power of god in your life then you see knowing that you need those tools you can now create a system that makes sure that your spiritual life never goes down because you need at every given point in your life the nature of your call will demand that you are on fire all the time to be instant in season and out of season number four are you ready the fourth question you have to ask and especially for organizations but then it also applies to your life is who does what the fourth question you must answer who does what distribution of tasks you will fail in life if you do everything most leaders fail in life because they cannot trust anybody who does what is a question you must ask as wonderful and great as this ministry is there are things i don't come close to you know why i rather do my work of oversight and allow those who are skilled and exceptional to do it i can play this keyboard you see but i cannot play this keyboard as effective as this person is playing i can play drums i can play most of the instruments here but I, I have not mastered to that level of efficiency and combining both of them will not make me efficient so there is a definition we are all on stage and we are all ministering but who does what husband who does what to avoid trouble wife who does what children who does what man of god who does what there has to be a proper definition of tasks I will never come for koinonia and cross my leg when it's time for the word. You see me come and I sit down quietly. The worship team doing their thing, testimonies, everyone doing their thing because I have my own slot in the program too. I can't get up arbitrarily and say, this is my ministry. All of you sit down. Even if I'm going to veto for a cause, I owe you an explanation to say the Holy Spirit came in and you will know this is an exception I told you compromises only make sense when standards are in place now please look up I'm saying this respectfully you know that I love the body of Christ I'm teaching you and as many who would want to listen 
there are many ministries and many organizations that do not have order because there is no definition of who does what the man of God can do anything while it is while the service is going on you will see papers flying around sorry you are the one who is going to raise offering are you aware and the person i didn't prepare it's okay just use second corinthians chapter eight and nine or nine and eight and you see those discussions and the person comes up and he's looking confused and wondering hoping he's right and he says praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord and all kinds of things are happening and then finally you raise the offering and you don't know what to do there is no order three people will come and raise offerings and it's as if they, are, they were trained by three different people they don't know what to say no standards no systems can you let me tell you this systems should be greater than individuals so that it does not matter who is doing the work the result is the same an example is your car it does not matter whether it's the husband driving or the wife is driving because it is not them that define how the car moves a system there is the mechanics of the car Are we together when you go to any of our banks across the globe you will almost find similar or the same experience yet they are sacking people and employing newer people do you know why they are not really concerned about the individuals because they know that the individuals will be immersed into a system that will limit their emotional interferences listen i'm teaching you this because this is how global brands spread they spread through systems so you can see apple kenya apple south africa apple nigeria apple uk individuals who may have never met themselves until and unless they're having an executive meeting and yet their results are similar you know why there is a common code that governs them when you call somebody a doctor say a consultant surgeon the person may be in abuja there may be another consultant surgeon in lagos another co consultant surgeon in adamawa three of them can literally meet the first time and meet inside a surgery room and none of them will be afraid of one another because there is a system that made them what they are how about the lecturers that teach students some of them talk fast some of them talk slow some of them look dull even though they are intelligent respectfully speaking some of them are very smart some of them have all kinds of temperaments but regardless the personality differences the students will still become what was desired because the system in this case the manual the modus operandi is greater than the personal biases of the lecturers do you know why I am sure that you will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder? It is not because of the person standing before you. This is it. Mm. Mm. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. I can still teach you even though I don't know your background. I can still teach you even though I know you may not have an advantage by default regardless the situation this was built to survive and produce a champion out of everyone regardless the limitation if I teach you my opinions I will only teach those whose life and history is similar to mine and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation is God helping someone so who does what please look at me there are some of you the reason why you are inefficient in your life today right now as you are listening to me is because you are doing many things that your level of growth you are supposed to have outsourced those things and given other people there are some of you right now respectfully speaking with the level to which god has lifted you and helped you you should not be the one roaming around to wash your clothes the three hours you are spending washing your clothes by reason of your lifting now is a waste of time you will say it's humility i respect you but you are wasting time do you understand what i'm teaching you now most of the 
efficient people in life they write everything that they need to excel and begin to allocate responsibilities this was what was killing moses in the bible if you read if you read every time there is increase you will have to shed off a lot of responsibilities and allot it to people you can trust so that you focus on the things that matter moses was wearing himself counseling people from morning till night and jethro his father-in-law said mr man you are about to kill yourself find people and set them as captains over hundreds thousands the same thing happened in acts chapter 6 the apostles were overseeing the sharing of food and there was a problem when you read from verse 1 among the grecian women and all of that and the disciples said no 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 no. the apostles you are distracting us we are about a serious assignment right now it says look among yourself give it to us please now verse 2 or 3 it says look among yourselves seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business it is business but not your business this business what is our own business verse 4 it says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry let me tell you this please look up respectfully speaking there are many men of God whose spiritual fire has gone down and who fail woefully now as far as the ministry of the word is concerned because administrative duties have become a burden on them and they cannot trust anyone. Can I tell you, when you are overly afraid of everybody, the problem is you. You have to take the risk to trust people. How were you when God started using you? All of us are students in training and sometimes you have to stamp your feet and just risk it this is very powerful there are things in my life that i minimize i don't get myself involved in some of the brightest and the finest leaders globally speaking they minimize themselves to two three or four important tasks and they give their all to it there's a statement they used to say jack of all jack of all trades master of none it's true let me tell you the truth you cannot effectively lead a ministry like this if you are the one involved in checking the offering and finding out where it went to and then you quickly find out where the security people are and then while you are here you are looking there are things you cannot do your times of fasting your times of prayer do you know what it takes to prepare one series you can see some of the things i'm bringing those definitions did not come in the place of prayer i studied <laughs> of course there are things that come in but are you getting what i'm saying now there is there is you cannot imagine believe me i'm not exaggerating the materials that i consult for one sermon i preach an average of three sermons per week aside from school of ministry and a lot of other things you cannot have the time to do a lot of things and still excel please define who does what some of you have grown-up children in your house you are still washing your car you are still washing your clothes call those children and tell them to behave themselves well and this is not about abuse or bully this is about training even if you are prosperous if they cannot do anything they should follow you and learn so that the day you are not there the system is in place can i tell you hold on you know that something is wrong when the system collapses in your absence every time your absence creates such a big vacuum something was wrong with the systemic nature of yourself or your organization i used to say it when i was in zaria that even if i'm not there for one year the only thing that should be missed is the unique expression of the grace of god upon my life but it should not collapse if the ministry collapses there i failed woefully so if i don't come for koinonia for one month the only thing you should miss here is the unique expression of my grace not edification not growth if growth stops with my absence then i failed listen let me tell you this some of you god is speaking to you 
if you do not build systems around your life you will not be able to maximize destiny you will fail in many other areas of your life because many things will depend on you wrongly so systems number five don't be tired though please listen your destiny needs this when a patient goes to the doctor sometimes they'll say swallow a drug it doesn't like it but the doctor says swallow it i know what i'm giving you and sometimes you turn as you are swallowing one you are also receiving injection you don't like it but you need it what some of you are hearing now you need it for some of you you don't need it now but you need it keep it no matter how much light i give you you will not need it when you are in the day but when the night comes you will quickly go back some of you are about to build businesses some of you are about to build ministries you may not need now what i'm giving you but pay attention to it and you will thank me some of you this is what you need right now we're about to talk about these areas of your life shortly question five are you ready the fifth question you must answer what is the most important aspect of the vision to focus on now what is the most important aspect of the vision to focus on now this talks about emphasis can i tell you god is not doing everything in your life at every time god is a god of times and seasons and he operates based on emphasis there is always something god is doing now there is always something an organization is doing now yes there are many things in the blueprint but god works one by one woe betides a man who cannot find the emphasis for his life and destiny now please look at me there are some of you based on what god is doing in your life now you should not be reading books on finances reading books on leadership you are just starting with god the emphasis should be pressing into god with fasting and prayer you got born again late now you got filled with the holy ghost just a few months ago it's trying to compress everything you you need there are things god needs to achieve in your life now every spiritual man who was built well will tell you how god started with us god didn't start with finances and systems and all of that he started with jesus he started with hunger he started with fire if you notice even as a man of god you will know how to disciple and train people you don't just get people born again and the next thing you are teaching them financial principles next thing you are teaching them leadership principles i'm not being sarcastic but within the limit of how growth happens there are things line upon line precepts upon precept is god speaking to us mm. i remember when i started with god there was nothing about finance pressing in fact there was even nothing about the mind mental transformation it was fire presence encounter lord show me your glory visions almost from morning till night it's as if you can't rest you put your head down an angel you put your head down some and you are wondering god what are you doing with my life you lift your hands you put it down your hands are shaking fire cold sensation you don't even know the name of what is happening you lie down to sleep you don't know whether the weather is cold or it's just you these are there are all kinds of impartations happening within your spirit man but the season will come when god will say now son you have done well in terms of your growth now you need to begin to study on your mind because your spiritual health alone will not produce victory holistically so god started introducing us to other people and at first some of us resisted it because it did not carry the semblance it looked like a betrayal to our fire like some of you is happening to you now as you are listening to me it looks like hearing what you are hearing is a betrayal to your passion for revival soon you will know that the sound system that you put on that crusade ground will require systems and organization for you to preach well are you learning now we love the lord with all our heart the first time we went on crusade there was not so much about administration but goodness there was fire and signs and wonders we finish the preaching of the crusade but we're owing money for sound say systems <laughs> spirituality did not fail but there was system failure <laughs> uh, 
in the name of jesus christ god will complete everything that needs to be completed in your life to make your christian experience holistic in the name of jesus christ look up please god is not doing everything every time he has emphasis and as a leader you must know what is god's emphasis in your life you must know what is the emphasis of your business at this point when koinonia started please look up i used to share with the people those days that the assignment was to enthrone christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities but first things first the first phase of the ministry had to do with building people so there was not so much emphasis to aesthetics and structure and all of that it didn't mean that we didn't believe in excellence but in order of priority are we together now so people could sit on the ground people could sit in an auditorium that maybe didn't have the best of ambience because one day it will happen my philosophy as given from God was that when you build people the people will build the structure and thank God for that wisdom that people were built and some of those people that were built today are the ones serving doing marvelous and mighty things first corinthians 10 23 first corinthians 10 23 it says all things are lawful if you look at it from amplified it says all things are permissible all things are we are free to do anything we please it says but not all things are helpful expedient profitable wholesome all things are legitimate but not all things are constructive very powerful you must know what god is doing per season in your life look at me there are some of you even though you are great men of god revivalist you will get to a point in your life where god's emphasis with you is your finances don't neglect it just because you feel that okay now um i should just focus on if, uh, 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 god can push down on you and you will find out that every book every message god will keep recommending it for the next six months is going to be your finances don't fight it if you jump that school of the spirit you will pay for it in the future in a way you are not prepared for For some of you, even though you are great men and women of God, you will get into seasons where the emphasis for you will be leadership and organization. Now you may be doing well in terms of the delivery of your spiritual solutions, but you need to now begin to build the structure. May you discern what God is doing at every season of your life in the name of Jesus and for those of you who run organizations here do not say we are multi-purpose doing everything no look at me please how many of you know that in every house there are many doors inside that house but there is always a door called the main door is that true the main door is what leads you and then you can leverage on other doors everybody who runs any successful conglomerate there is one thing that stands them out and then they use the leverage of that product to now build all other products when you talk about bill gates and microsoft microsoft is not the only thing he does but that is what brought him out that gives him a leverage to do everything when you talk about warren buffett berkshire hathaway that's not the only thing he does he's not only an investor there are many other things he does but that is what brought him out when you talk about all of zuckerberg it's not only facebook and all of these things there are many other things they do there are many sports people who also have clothing lines but it is just is what brings them out you must know the area of emphasis per season i can teach on finances i can teach on relationships i can teach on several things but the core area of fire and grace and the area where the mantle speaks you see is in the area of encounters communicating the wisdom of the spirit steering revival helping people to have spiritual intelligence do not major on minors and minor on majors what is most important in your life now 
what is the most important aspect of your vision and finally number six are you ready for this what are the major limitations pitfalls and distractions to avoid I'm showing you five questions you must ask and answer because the systems you are going to build will be in honor to the answers that you find from this question what are the major limitations comma pitfalls and distractions to avoid first Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 what are the major limitations because one of the assignment of systems and structures is to keep you true to your values to keep you true to what you stand for and you must be able to know the limitations the pitfalls and the distractions to avoid it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour please look up there are many pitfalls that can destroy you spiritually business wise politically and one of the ways you manage your growth and your result is by creating systems around your life respectfully speaking you cannot call me and say ah um apostle how are you um can you just travel to this state and come to social pay we just want to enjoy ourselves maybe i would have been able to do that years ago but right now there are systems around my life that help me to manage my consistency and manage my results are you getting what i'm saying now yes maybe the person who is calling you plans to kill you for instance and because you don't have systems and structures you get to a point in your life where you will need security clearance you will need several or it's not policing you it's managing you so that you remain effective for those who god has called you to do many of us don't have systems around our lives because we do not know the pitfall if there is the pitfall of pride in your life show me the system you have created if there is the pitfall of all kinds of lusts and all kinds of um, um, wrong relationships that can come and introduce you many people were destroyed because when God started promoting them their relationships changed they now found out that 90% of the wealthy people around them were godless people and because you have to go for all your friends birthday party they now traveled and went to several countries and saw things that were against their convictions but they could not leave it because that's what happens at this level systems can protect you beyond your imagination is god speaking to someone especially when it has to do with rising even financially the moment god begins to lift you the dynamics of your living will change immediately there are relationships you don't need but will force their way around your life systems will give you the legitimacy to say no to many things that may be good but are not useful for your life for instance if somebody invites you to come respectfully speaking for some birthday party or some occasion somewhere that may not honor your convictions if you say no they will ask you based on what systems give you the legitimacy are we together now yes is someone learning what I'm, I'm teaching you you see how powerful this is systems are very powerful they can protect you write this down You must build a code of conduct and a code of operation around your life and in your organization out of these answers. The answers to these six questions. You must build a code of conduct out of these five or six questions. You must build a code of conduct and build a code of operation. Don't just have a code of conduct alone. A code of conduct guides your character a code of operation guides how you do things 
it takes more than being a man of character to excel a code of conduct guides how you behave but a code of operation guides how you do things hallelujah yes years ago let me tell you this i i got to a point in my life respectfully speaking when god started lifting me and doors were opening and until that time i in my conservative way i didn't think that i would need a system to manage my itinerary and all of that and people would call me and sometimes there could be five six calls for ministrations the dates clashing i may not even remember I would just tell this person yes oh you are my friend i will come yes and sometimes i would find out that i had agreed for three ministrations within the same time not knowing and the people i found out that i was damaging useful relationships in my life because now i would say yes to this and find out i said yes to this person now how would i choose i knew that my failure was a revelation that i had risen to a point in my life where allocating that be, and then because you know starting ministry most of my ministration was among friends and people who i was building a relationship with. and there were times that there, there are legitimate reasons to say no but i may not have the courage to say no so you allow the system to say no for you you, you see how powerful it is now there are many things you cannot say no to as an individual so you leave the no to the system most of you have have carried needless enemies in your life today because instead of allowing the system you built to say no you kept saying no by yourself you will have too many troubles in your life with people you will you will you will lose out on many precious relationships if you don't create a system around what you have